much awaited studio tour video 2020. There's been a lot going on for the last year and a bit. You guys who've been regular watchers of the channel and the live streams know that. But one of the most requested videos that I have is a proper studio tour. I was requested in the last studio, didn't really give you guys one. Uh, but now that I've had lockdown to build my studio and set it all up, I decided to show you. My studio is excessive. That's just a big asterisk in the corner somewhere. Excessive. You do not need to have a studio at this size. This is literally an accumulation of kit and gear that I've had over the past five years of me streaming. I've been doing video game work for like over 10 years now on broadcast television and I've collected different bits and bobs and pieces and brand deals that have stitched this setup together. Again, it is probably one of the most excessive live streaming setups. And I, I, I like if Epos watched this or Harris Heller, they would go completely unnecessary. I know. Like, I know it's unnecessary, but I'll explain to you why I have different components and why I've chosen to work with different things. Even Epos has helped um, me correct a couple of things. And uh, Phil, thank you, uh, from, from Elgato. Um, yes, let me, let, me, let, me, let me get into this. My setup is a two PC setup, a dual PC setup. Uh, the first PC, which is my streaming PC, is up here on my Samsung ultra wide monitor. I love this monitor. It's, there's a couple of reasons why I like it. It's 144 hertz. Um, it is great for VR gaming, but when you are streaming, you don't want to stream in a widescreen aspect ratio. Um, so I use it with all my information. So you can see that above me, I've got my OBS on the left. I've got my chat on the right with stream, uh, with stream manager. Uh, sometimes I've got my stream elements up and running as well. And I've got my stream deck software uh, going at the top. Um, so that's literally my control station, like where everything goes down. The second PC is down here. Now this is also another Samsung monitor. I have done some work with, uh, like showcasing this monitor. It is NVIDIA G-Sync, but I don't necessarily use that G-Sync because it's 240 Hertz. 240 Hertz is excessive, but if you guys want to perform better at games, you know a higher refresh rate is better. And I've managed to get high refresh rate matches. I'm gonna show you guys how, and this is why it's so excessive. I'm gonna first go through the builds of these two machines. Then I'm gonna go through my peripherals that I use on my desk, how I get my lighting, and uh, how I get my stream out there. Okay, so the first machine that I've got is my gaming rig. So it's this one that is propped up on my desk over here. It's got 32 gigs of RAM and AMD 5700 XT uh, GPU. It's got a Ryzen 2700X uh, CPU. Obviously not the best, but completely competent for what I'm doing. That's the wonderful thing about everything that AMD has been producing so far, is that you can even get like an older generation CPU and it is super competent for what you need. The motherboard is an MSI X570 Ace. It is their, it's not their top tier, but it is an extremely high tier. I've done a whole video on this motherboard. Um, and of course it fits because it's X570. It's the new generation motherboards that fit the, the AMD processors. And it means that if I want to get a better uh, Ryzen chipset, I can upgrade, uh, which is really nice. So I'm kind of future-proofing myself with this. It is extremely competent. It plays like Overwatch at extremely high frame rates. Remember, I want to try get that 240 frames a second. And that's how I pump this out. I'm really looking forward to AMD's new GPUs, by the way, because I think I'm going to be able to achieve more. But how do I get this out onto the stream? Well, as I said, the top machine, the control center, everything that is processing the stream is underneath uh, the desk over here. In order for me to play in 240 frames a second on my 240 hertz monitor, I need a capture card that can pass through 240 hertz. And the Elgato 4K60 Pro is that solution. That is a PCIe card that slots into my streaming machine and I run the HDMI out. I take the HDMI 2.1 cable from this machine into the capture card under the desk and then, you know, then run a new one into this monitor over here, which means that I can play 240 frames a second in 240 hertz, which is phenomenal. For those of you who don't know why that's a big deal, it means that I've got a higher chance of seeing my enemies. There are more frames that are coming to my face. The latency is a lot lower and we already have a terrible latency to the internet here. So the, the fewer bottlenecks in the system, the better. And one of the bottlenecks that I can uh, fix is 
frame rate. And I guarantee you there's a great video with uh, Linus and uh, Shroud where they demonstrate the benefit of a higher refresh rate on a monitor. Go watch that, you'll perform much better. And that just ensures that when people are watching my stream, they see the best Overwatch play. I'm a, I'm a hitscan DPS. They see the best, best Overwatch play that they can, that I'm capable of, of performing on my, on my broadcast. This is a very, very special rig. Um, and it's probably the most excessive of the rigs. In fact, I've got a lot of tweaking and tuning to get this rig right. It's got an older GPU. I've got a, a Radeon uh, Vega 56 uh, in there. The chipset is a Ryzen Threadripper 3970X, which is incredibly overkill, especially for a machine that is dedicated to just transcoding. I also edit a lot of video on this machine, by the way. So if I do edit, like I've got that long uh, aspect ratio, and that's why I have such a powerful CPU. In fact, the whole idea is to try get that stream at the highest quality, the highest quality bitrate, at the highest quality uh, output that I can. It's one of those quality of life things for a viewer that's watching one of my streams, by the way, twitch.tv forward slash Grant Hines, um, that when you come through to the stream that you go like, why does this look so good? Sometimes you don't notice it. It's, ha it's happening subconsciously, but it's those little details that make a huge difference. The motherboard is an MSI Creator TRX40, which is a beast of a motherboard. It's got a ton of features for content creators, including like Nahamic sound, RGB mystic lighting with MSI. It's got AMD Crossfire technology built straight into it. It's got frozen heat sinks. It's got a core boost. Uh, it's DDR4 boost with steel armor. It is a new generation motherboard with that lane performance built into it. But as a content creator, the creator series that MSI have got is actually something that you should be looking at. A lot of people look at the gaming stuff, but the creator series, um, has a lot of like quality of life features that you know us as creators need, including this one suits, uh, supports up to 20 USB ports. 20 USB ports. So if I, as you can see on the desk, I've got like cam links, I've got a bunch of uh, cameras that are USB enabled, I've got USB microphones. Those need to go into the, to the motherboard at some point. And often with gaming motherboards, they get overloaded, you can't have as enough cameras on them. I, I do have an excessive stream. I want to make this as quality inducive as possible. Is that a word? Quality inducive? I want to make the stream as full of quality as possible. Like I want you to come here and it's like a television production. I do come from a TV background doing the stuff on, on broadcast television. I've been doing that for like 10 years. I want to kind of get some of that experience as much as I can into my live streams. And that is how I do it. I'm gonna add all of these things in the description below. There won't be any affiliate links, but I'll link you to some South African stores that you can go purchase from, which you should support. Let's talk about the stuff on the desk. The keyboard I'm using is the Corsair K95 RGB uh, Platinum XT. Uh, I have done a whole video on that and on the Dark Core Pro, which is the wireless mouse that I'm using. I'm just charging it right now, but they are incredible devices. Uh, and I am sponsored by Corsair. If you guys wanna go check that, so check out those videos. I'll include them in the panels, ugh, in the cards of this video. Just from a microphone perspective, <laughs> I am using the uh, Elgato Wave 3, uh, which is Elgato's brand new microphone. I've been doing some R&D with Elgato on this particular mic. I've got a bunch of R&D units that I've, that I've had and I, I had some input in some of the features that are gonna be being brought out of here, which has been very cool and I'm super grateful for that opportunity. I'm a huge fan of Elgato, but this mount is the road mount with the Elgato shock mount and the Elgato pop filter. Check this pop filter out. It is so, it is so nice. I can't, I can't explain to you. Elgato always seem to make something that just makes me just like so excited and I've never thought I'd be so excited for like a modular uh, microphone setting, but look how slick it looks and, and low and low profile. It's great when you are filming something or a, a, you know live streaming with something and your face is getting in the way, it like really hides it, which is, uh, hides the microphone, which is great. I think all good technology is technology that disappears in favor of whatever you're creating with it or whatever you're using it for. If you notice the technology while you're creating all the time, because it's always in your face, it's not necessarily good. It needs, it's a tool and it needs to help you get to that finish line. This is the Stream Deck XL, which is Elgato's like big boy when it comes to uh, the, the Stream Deck series. I've been a huge fan of the Stream Deck series ever since I bought the first one when I was in the UK in 2017. Um, 
it's, for those of you who don't know what a stream deck is, I have more videos, I'll include links in, you know, in the cards. But just a summary, it's a vision mixing desk for live streamers that, who want to direct and solo direct their live streams. There's a lot of stuff that's happening on the street. It doesn't look as pretty as a lot of other people's stream decks, but I, I do feel like as, you know, it's the workers bench thing. I'm always changing some stuff on here, but I'm doing some really creative things with this. I'm able to zoom in to my face when I'm live streaming. I'm able to cut to different scenes. I'm, be able, I'm able to like change the brightness of the lights uh, in my studio which I think is really nifty. <laughs> um, I'm able to drop in ads. I'm able to uh, change the chat with, the, with Twitch integration. It is a really powerful tool. And this video won't fully explain to you why it's so powerful. And anybody who thinks that it's just a glorified numpad has not used the Stream Deck. Elgato's power is in the software and the things that it delivers us as content creators through that software. The hardware is, good quality nearly superfluous but it's the gateway to all the things that you're able to achieve with the technology behind it speaking of light control these are the olgato key lights and they are the best lights for streamers for a couple of reasons the first is that they are controllable over wi-fi using products like the stream deck if you don't physically have a stream deck you can get the software on your mobile device on your iphone and you can control them that way from a form factor perspective they are desk clamped uh, which is perfect for live streamers because they can go up against a wall directly. And the panel is extremely flat. It took them a couple of years, I've chatted with Stegi at Elgato, to actually develop these very flat diffusing boxes that have got a ton of LEDs in them to give you such a bright, look how bright they go. Like I'm gonna, this is flipping, that's bright. <laughs> for, for a panel like this, I gotta turn this down. <laughs> for a panel like this, that is exceptionally bright. Uh, they have these telescopic arms which allow you to like lift them up or turn, like drop them down and if you want to do like three point lighting you can if you have a third light behind you by just doing some really interesting things. Lastly you can change the color so which is called the color temperature of the particular light so you might want to have a warmer color temperature for your room or if you want to have a bluer, bluer color temperature if you're I don't know a little bit more frazzled with your face you'll be able to do that. It's kind of like sorting out the white balance but inside the lights instead of like in the footage afterwards which is less resource intensive on your system, number one, depending on what kind of setup you're running with OBS, but also just, it looks better. Traditionally, if you don't have lights that can change the white balance, you'd have to add in OBS a filter to change the actual white balance uh, and change the, the color, which you, the, the, less, the fewer of those things are better because depending again on your setup, it might be a little bit too resource intensive. I have a couple of cameras that are set up on the desk and uh, they use Elgato cam links to connect directly through into OBS, which really is a genius device. It converts the camera signal into a webcam feed so that the computer recognizes it as a webcam. So if I'm having Zoom calls or Discord chats or Skype chats or even have myself in OBS, I, it literally reads it as a webcam, which is super handy. The third and last camera I have is stationed over here so that you can see the whole setup on a wire. Because Elgato's got a 4K cam link device, which means that I can capture camera footage at 4K technically, I've got the Canon uh, XA40 camcorder. Why I like using the Canon XA40 is that it's got a clean HDMI out, which means that the HDMI that you can see over here that is outputted has got no like mo graphics on it or like uh, focus or f-stop or whatever that you'd usually see on an uh, on a on a UI like that. It is a clean feed, which is great because it also has a handle with integrated. Uh, XLR ports on the side for mics. It is a great backup for added audio because the Canon, uh, the, the, the Camlink can also take in audio sources. And I literally just get the highest quality performance out of a camera like this. Canon is also really good at natural skin tone. And because I'm gonna be filming most of my skin tone with this camcorder, it looks incredible. I use the Corsair Virtuoso SER. So you won't believe what happened. We recorded this whole thing, walked around the studio. At this point, were you seeing this? The audio bugged out. So I'm gonna pick it up from here. I don't know, Tristan put in some TV static or something. And I'm just gonna pick it up using my brand new, actually since that video was recorded, I got the Elgato ring light. Uh, I know it's in my glasses right now, but it actually isn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. 
thumbnail. I'll work out a thumbnail. So back to the uh, studio tour. So this this are oh, these are my headsets. This can be like to be my headset. This is my um, Corsair Virtuosos. In fact, the full name is the Virtuoso RGB Wireless SE, and they are. Oh, I can hear stuff here. Oh, Sam's Sam's behind me. They're like a wireless headset. I really like these guys. Obviously, I'm sponsored by Corsair, um, and you can see these amazing de details inside the the side of them. Um, they actually have little laser etched holes where the RGB can shine right through, and they're fully metal, so they're like really, really robust with these really over ear cups. Um, it really helps when you are blocking out as much noise as possible, but it also uh, is a lot lighter than they look. Um, there are a lot of reviews online which have mixed opinions about them, but from my use case, I love having wireless uh, headsets like this, high quality ones too, because not only is the microphone really good, here's the microphone, it detaches physically to the device. Not only is it like really nice having um, wireless ones, for streaming, I think it's nearly imperative. I do a lot of things on the stream, like I've got cameras behind me, I, I move around the studio, and being able to like walk around with a wireless headset adds another level to the stream that I think is really important. It's a production value, uh, quality of life thing, that uh, really makes a huge difference to me. Um, I'll tell you exactly how I do that in a bit. The next thing is SD100 RGB headstand. They obviously go directly with the Corsair headset. And one of the nice things about this, not only does it look aesthetic, that's probably why a lot of people will get this straight off the bat, but it's actually functional. It's got two USB ports on the front and the side. I use my um, wireless charging dongle for the, well, my wireless dongle for the headset. And I've got, um, a wireless mouse, obviously. So, because I've got the wireless mouse, then I can plug it in there too, which is really nice. I, I use the Corsair Dark Core RGB. Uh, this is a wireless mouse, um, and it's yeah, it's it's pretty phenomenal uh, because it's using a, a technology that Corsair uh, have patented called Slipstream. It, it means that there's like one-to-one -one movement, so I can play competitive Overwatch pretty much. Uh, Competitive is a strong term. <laughs> um, on my live stream, you can see how good I am with with, uh, with my DPS using uh, a wireless mouse, which is something that uh, with Bluetooth is very very hard to do, if not impossible, with latency. So really proud of of, of this guy. Um, also, just the perfect weight, really nice grip. I've got a whole review on this uh, on the channel, so you guys can have a look at it. So you can see why I specifically liked uh, the, the Dark Core RGB. Another quality of life feature for the desk is I've got a USB switcher that I've installed underneath my desk with double-sided tape. Uh, it's from Ugreen, and essentially what it does is it allows you to switch the mouse and keyboard between the two computers. When I started live streaming on a, on, on a dual PC, I needed to have a separate mouse and keyboard for the other machine, the streaming machine. But now I can just literally tap a button and the entire mouse and keyboard move over to the second computer and then move back over to um, move back over to the gaming rig, which is really cool for a viewer to watch. Just means that I have a much cleaner desk, especially with my wide camera of the desk behind me. To optimize as much watch time on my stream as possible, I don't like having downtime. I don't like be right back screens. I don't like. Uh, leaving the camera frame for any amount of time. If I'm streaming for four or five hours, I'm barely off camera. And I think that's really important. And one of the ways I managed to do that, especially if you are doing things like going to the toilet and you wanna, or, 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 or making coffee, making like making tea or something, is having a roaming camera. Now I use uh, my Samsung Galaxy Note 10. This is actually my, because I'm using the Note 20 at the moment. This is kind of like my backup phone. I use it wirelessly. Sorry, it's so dirty. Um, and I use an app called Cam On. <laughs> hey, I use an app called Cam On for Android. And it literally uses an RTSP to stream over the network. And I'm able to like have a scene where I'm live streaming with this camera and using this audio inside of OBS, which looks incredible and it's one of those moments that when other streamers come into the stream they go like how does how does he do that i'll literally walk around the house and and roam around especially when i'm waiting for a lobby to load up or we're searching for a match uh, this is a great way to keep that engagement going um, if somebody knocks on the door i've got a friend coming around i can include them in the live stream with this 
uh, with this camera, which is really cool. And lastly, one of the things that I bought for myself in the UK before I left to come back to South Africa was this Elgato green screen. They weren't in South Africa at the time. They are available now, so you guys have no flipping excuse. But one, I used to build my own green screens all the time. I used PVC pipes and they worked very well. But the main problem that I had was that firstly, the real estate in my room was completely dominated by this massive canopy of green screen behind me. And to dismantle it and rebuild it every time I streamed was just so hard. I, I said something in my ring light video and you can go see that as well. I'll include a link to it. Um, that reducing the friction to create something like means that you're probably going to create more and create better product. It, there's no use in spending a lot of time working about how you're going to build something instead of just building it. Um, and the green screen was one of those things. I also got the real estate of my room back because in London we had a very small room. But now here, like if I want to use the space to film an unboxing or something of that, of, you know, of that nature, I can l pull the green screen down, lift it up and pull it down really straightforwardly and easily. It's really convenient and uh, a pleasure to have in the room. Some things that I've added to my setup since that last video actually, so I'm glad the audio kind of bummed out a little bit, is that I've got my, I've got a key light air behind me. That key light air is doing something called, it's literally creating a rim light behind my head. It's one of the main reasons you have a key light. Um, and that means that when I key out the green screen behind me, it just has a much sharper edge. It looks a lot cleaner. Um, and obviously this ring light, which uh, is really nice for vlogging and creating content like this in front of the camera behind the studio. If there's any gear that I have in my studio that you want me to go a little bit deeper into, I would love to just let me know in the comments below. I'll, you know, if you want to see a little bit more about how I use my stream decks or my Olgato, uh, my Olgato Wave on a dual PC or um, there's an innumerable amount of things that I have going on in my stream that a lot of people don't really understand. Let me know, also follow me on, on Twitter and on Instagram. I can answer some questions over there too and make little videos for you there. Send me pictures of your setup. I actually really wanna see what you guys have been producing and I'll see you guys in another video. Cheers.